Okay, I'm going to speak about something that's been in the British news for quite a while now. Um, and I believe this case may have implications um, to wider legal issues. Um, the most important thing in uh, any justice system is justice. That the accused are punished and that the victims of any given crime uh, receive vindica vindication through justice and support in the system. Before I um, go ahead with this video, or the main point of the video, I want to make a few things very clear. Um, number one, I'm not a legal expert. So I'm not pretending to be. I'm going to read off a website. I'm, you know, My knowledge on legal issues is not wonderful, so I'm not pretending that it is. Second point, um, the person I'm going to talk about, Chad Evans, a footballer, um, I don't know him personally. And I don't know if he's guilty or innocent. I simply don't know. So this video should not be seen as a defence of Chad Evans. It's not intended that way. Rather, I'm going to raise serious questions about his case, which I think has another has implications for other defendants in rape cases. Um, so that's the second thing. I'm not acting as a defence for him because I don't know. I'm simply presenting uh, some of the issues that are there. Thirdly, um, before anybody says that I'm trivialising rape, absolutely not. But I have argued that because it's such a serious crime, we should openly discuss this. At the moment in Britain, I'm not sure how this compares to other countries, but in Britain, um, there's almost no discussion of rape. In part because it's a taboo subject that is, it's a serious crime. So it's a taboo subject. But the problem with that is um, anybody who raises issues concerning rape, especially if they are a man, is automatically branded an apologist or someone who um, believes that there's nothing wrong with rape. Now just to be clear, I think rape is an absolutely abhorrent crime. When I think of rape, what I think of is someone, usually women, but it could be a man as well, um, being forced to have sex against her will. To me that seems clear cut, that's what rape is. Now in this case, that doesn't seem to be uh, in line with the circumstances of why he was arrested. And if he served two years in jail almost, no, more than two, two years, for the circumstances I'm about to read out, I think that is very troubling. So, first of all I'll read this out. And then I'll, I'll continue. Um, please do watch the whole video. I'm, I'm not making this to say he is innocent. That's not the point of this video because I don't know. But I do think there are serious flaws in this case. And I want to read this out. It won't take very long. Please bear with me. So at the top of his website it says, The Ministry of Justice allows those under appeal to use the internet through a third party to make serious representations about their innocence. Chad Evans was wrongly convicted of rape on 20th of April 2012. This is from the website. Introduction. On 20th of April 2012, Chadwin Evans, a 23-year-old professional footballer, was convic convicted of rape at Carnarvon Crown Court. On Friday the 17th of October 2014 at 5am, he was released from custody and will continue the fight to clear his name. Chedwin Evans maintains his absolute innocence and his family, friends and many who know the true facts of the case believe that his conviction was a gross miscarriage of justice. On the 15th of July 2014, Ched's new legal team, David Emanuel of Garden Court Chambers London and Sean Draycott submitted an application to the Criminal Cases Review Commission, which is the first step to a second appeal. They are confident in their submission. We believe that to, due to Ched's profesh, profession, information that was not used by his original defence and other information that has been gathered since his conviction will in time overturn a wrongful conviction. For those who only read the media reports, this website endeavours to redress the balance by presenting the evidence in a balanced and accurate manner so the public can assess the salient facts and make their own judgement. From the outset, we would like to state that this website in no way seeks to undermine the seriousness of rape or trivialise the suffering that rape victims suffer. We recognise that rape is a terrible crime which, if committed, ought to carry a severe sentence. This website is not about the severity of the sentence. We are stating that Ched did not commit the crime of rape at all. 
Furthermore, we recognise and acknowledge that in rape cases, the anonymity of the victim is a fundamental legal principle that should be upheld and respected. When reading this website, these fundamental points should be kept in mind. It should be noted that the complainant, who was alleged to have been raped in this case, stated when interviewed by the police and subsequently maintained in court that she could not remember anything at all, other than a very brief period in the takeaway. She remembers being in the nightclub and waking up the next morning in the primary inn, a time span that specifically covers the entire sexual activity which led to Ched being convicted of rape and his co-accused Clayton MacDonald acquitted. The only evidence of what sexual activity occurred came from the accounts of his co-accused Clayton MacDonald, who also had sex with the complainant and was found not guilty of rape. Ched and the night porter who was listening, uh, Ched and the night porter who was listening outside the room. As this case revolves around the issue of intoxication and consent, it should be noted that it is established in the case of R. V. Bree that drunken consent to sexual intercourse is nevertheless consent in the eyes of the law. This does not mean that if a person is unconscious through drink or drugs, it is acceptable to have sex with that person, but rather where an intoxicated person is functioning, unable to make conscious decisions at the time of intercourse, and then subsequently regrets that decision and decides to make a complaint of rape, her self-inflicted intoxication ought not to be considered as relevant to the issue of consent. The police arrested both Ched and Clayton at the station. They acknowledged that the only evidence that sexual activity had taken place was their admission. There was no complaint of rape, no forensic evidence, no injury and no complaint. Finally, it should be noted that the burden of proof in criminal law lies with the prosecution, and in order to gain a conviction, the prosecution must prove beyond reasonable doubt that a crime was committed, i.e. the jury has to be sure an offence has taken place. Essentially, this means that following the submissions of the prosecution, if there remains any doubt that a crime has been committed, the accused must be acquitted. It is not for the accused to prove his innocence. With the above in mind, please read the following key facts and make up your own mind. If you're a football fan, pl please put aside your affiliations and assess this case on its own merit. Um, so that is the outline of the case. Now, reading that, I have to say there are some things that are glaring for me. Now, I know people watching this who may be um, against Jed Evans who say, oh, well, that's biased. It's his own website. Of course it's going to say that. But I would make this point. His legal team would no way be able to put out false facts on a social network like that, you know, without consequences. So I do trust that everything they have said is accurate. Otherwise, you know, they, they couldn't make a public statement like that on a public website that wasn't accurate without facing legal consequences. Um, and they've upheld the law. They haven't named the victim. They haven't, um, you know, it's... But for me, some things are glaring, the obvious, that the victim um, couldn't remember anything. Now, this is worrying. This man has served over two years in jail for a crime he maintains he didn't commit. And the only evidence seems to be that he and his co-accused admitted that they had sex with this woman. Now, that means that several things could have happened. It means that um, they they won't admit that what they done that they raped the woman when she was so intoxicated she had no control of over what over what she was doing and that is class as rape in the law of the land. But um, there's several important points there that seem to be overlooked. The fact that no complaint was made. So I'm wondering why they were arrested. Was it the night porter that reported them an alleged rape? I mean, it's, it sounds like the woman herself didn't complain of this. So there's some certain things here that don't seem to add up. Now, I, I appreciate that they are not at liberty to give all the details of the case publicly. Um, based on that, though, to me, there's serious questions. I mean, if she can't remember what happened, it could mean that she was so intoxicated that she can't remember. And if they went ahead and had sex in a situation where she wasn't in a position to give consent, that's obviously morally wrong, and that is actually classed as rape. Um, and obviously it does stand out the fact they could remember it, she couldn't, but to me, this is, uh, leaving aside the legal facts for a second here, this is just an emotional response, I guess you could say. To me, 
rape is an abhorrent crime and if you have been someone who was forced to have consent against your will surely that would be such a horrifying experience that you would remember every terrible detail to me not remembering really does raise questions because if you know if it's such a terrible experience and I've no doubt that it is actual rape cases surely that is something that will haunt the victim for the rest of their life and she can't remember it now to me that's really a glaring issue and I think it needs to be redressed in um, legal in legal frameworks because that really does lead to serious questions. Now what he has said was he was guilty of having an affair on his partner or cheating on his partner and he's publicly admitted that and he publicly apologised to his partner. It's interesting that she's entirely stood by him. Now maybe that's just... Um, you know, image, or I, I don't know what that is, but for me there are several things about this case that is glaring. The fact that no complaint was made, the fact that the victim couldn't, excuse me, couldn't remember anything, and the fact that only evidence, so-called evidence, that they seem to go on is that he admitted that he had sex with the woman. Now, of course, he insists that it's uh, it was consensual. Um... I really do think this is flawed. I'm not saying he's innocent. It may well be that she was so intoxicated he went in her head and had sex. Um, that is cast as rape. But what he is saying is that uh, she um, it was consensual. That the act was consensual. So that might mean that the woman regretted it and is lying. And I don't think that should be a shocking thing to say. It's happened before. There have been cases where women have had sex, regretted it the next day, and then alleged rape. And, you know, shoot me down for saying that, but it has happened. Now, as the website says, they don't condone rape. They think it's a heinous crime. And um, I agree, rape is a terrible crime. But if we have a situation where you can't even discuss it, without being called a rape apologist or that's a serious problem I just think this case has a lot of in, and in some ways I think the fact he's a footballer partly goes against him and this is why footballers have in many ways a negative stereotype they're seen as arrogant they're seen as rich boys who and players who womanize and who basically think they can do what they want that is basically a public image of footballers so I suspect that from the outset this man probably had a prejudice against him because it's you know the jury wasn't biased supporters of Chad Evans the jury would have been independent men and women who presumably would have had no personal connections to him which is fair that's right but what if that jury was biased by the fact that this was a professional footballer it could well be the jury was biased against that image. I'm not saying that they were. I wasn't there. And I think, by the way, being a juror is a very, very difficult position to be in. So I don't want to be too judgmental of their position. And I'm sure they heard a lot more than we have. But I just think there's glaring question marks about this. Incidentally, in terms of my own views about what rape is, and again, shoot me down for this, but, you know, we have a situation in Britain today when you can't even talk about it. So, for example, even trying to debate how we define rape, I'm not talking about rape itself, because, you know, anyone who says rape is no big deal, is that's a shame, shameful thing to say. Rape is a terrible thing, but I do think it is legitimate to debate how we define rape. That's not the same as trivialising it. Not the same at all. It's a bit like how do you define terrorism. Now most people would say terrorism is a crazy fundamentalist blowing up a building, killing lots of people or shooting shooting people and so on. That's quite straightforward. But others would say terrorists are freedom fighters. Now sorry for that analogy but with rape again you have a very serious crime but you know there is, I'm sorry but there is a difference between a woman being dragged down a back alley and brutally attacked by a rapist against her will 
and a woman who is so drunk that she can't remember what happened. That doesn't mean it's right for a man in that situation to take advantage of her. I think that's a terrible thing to do. Now, in the law of the land, that's class of rape. Um, there's another issue I have. If you have two adults who are drunk... Now, this case doesn't suggest that Chad Evans and his friend were also drunk. But if you have a case where two adults are drunk, who do you think is going to be seen as responsible? It's going to be the man, if there's an allegation of rape. The woman will be seen as helpless. The man will be seen as a rapist, even if both adults are drunk. I think that's wrong. And I also think it is completely odious that in rape cases the um, the victim is anonymous but the defendant uh, sorry I should say yeah accused the accused is named that's appalling now the official or let's say the, the argument for having that situation is because if you have a serial rapist then women who have been a victim of that serial rapist will come forward if he is on trial now that's a compelling argument but my, my counter-argument would be, well, okay, if you have that situation, if a man who is a serial rapist is then charged, convicted, and sentenced for that, then he will be named, then other victims can come forward, and he can face another trial for those crimes. Although maybe that's naive, maybe if he's already been sentenced he can't face another trial. But, you know, I've heard of criminals um, facing other trials for committing murder inside so I don't see why that would be you know just because he's been sentenced for one crime I don't see why it would hold back from him then being sentenced for another crime when new evidence has emerged so I think it is a disgrace that accused the accused are named because no matter what way you gloss it over if a man is accused of rape that stigma will be with him for the rest of his life whether he's guilty or innocent if he's guilty he deserves it if he's innocent then that's um, terrible. Whereas, at least if you are anonymous, then it doesn't affect the rest of your life in the same way. What I will say about this case is I'm going to follow it closely, see if there is a, a new appeal, and I'll follow developments. Not because I'm particularly interested in Chet Evans, but I do think this could be a hallmark case if it turns out that um, some of this evidence was ignored. It just seems to me frankly disturbing that a man can serve over two years in jail when the only evidence seems to be that he said he had sex. Now, the woman who can't be named um, basically says she can't remember. She never said that he had sex with her against her will. In which case it would be a case of her word against his. To me this is a very flawed case. And by the way, I'm not biased to Chet Evans. I didn't even know the guy before this case. So it's not like I'm like a football fan and I... And by the way, I don't think football fans should be... Um, and I have no sympathy for people who are attacking the victim and so on. You know, that doesn't help anyone in these sort of cases. But, you know, I would say to football fans, don't try to look at just the legal facts and... Forget the fact he's a well-known footballer. That's irrelevant, actually. Um, because it would be exactly the same principles if it was a regular Tom, Dick or Harry that was in this situation. The same principles. The circumstances are a bit different because, you know, on one hand, he's continuing to be punished by this, um, basically, slander campaign in the media. Uh, convicted rapist, Chet Evans. That's You know, wherever you read the name, that's how he will now appear. What the papers should be saying is um, Chad Evans, who was convicted of rape, but is appealing his case. That's a much more neutral statement. It's not saying he's innocent. But when you have something that convicted rapist, it automatically demonises him. Now, I think that's wrong in a case that many do consider to be a miscarriage of justice. You know, editors shouldn't be writing that. Even though it is factually true, he is a convicted rapist in the eyes of the law. The fact that many believe this to be a miscarriage of justice, I think they should be very cautious about that. Because if there is a new trial, and it's determined that he is actually innocent, a lot of people are going to owe him an apology. And I should close with this, I am not saying he's innocent. I'm not saying that, but I genuinely believe that there are flaws with this case. If it was a case that he had sex with a woman against her will, 
I'd have no sympathy with him. But I genuinely believe there are flaws in this case. And that isn't to say that rape doesn't happen. It does. And women or men who suffer from rape should get justice. And rapists should face punishment. I just believe that this case shows us that we really, really need to be clear how we define rape. And to me right now, it's not that clear. And far too often it just seems that if a, a rape is alleged... Um, well, actually, that's not true because there's many cases it has to be said. I have to balance this out. There are many genuine victims of rape that never get justice, and that's equally abhorrent. You know, the lack of justice is equally abhorrent to a miscarriage of justice. So I'm pleased the website's been responsible and said that they're not trivialising rape. And this is an important point. They're not appealing the length of his time in jail because if he really did rape her, Actually, two years is quite lenient. But I, personally, I believe there are serious flaws in this case. And I, I follow developments. But, you know, it's, I don't think it's, like, biased because I'm a man. I know there's a lot of women who also support him. And, well, I, I don't directly support him, but I just think there's flaws in the case. Um, and actually, I, I first came across this when I made an initial video on this. One of my subscribers pointed out that there were serious flaws in the case. At that time, I wasn't familiar with all of this. So, I think it's important. I'll put a link to his website. And just for the record, I'm not doing that because I think he's innocent. I don't know. I'm just doing it because I think it is fair to have a balanced perspective rather than the current demonization that he's going through in the media. It largely is demonization, especially from left-wing papers like The Guardian. Um, you know, it's... Okay, I'll put a link to his website. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this.